What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. This is your $2,000 second stimulus check update, stimulus package update, and news report for Monday, January 18th. In just two days, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris will be sworn into office. Also, in two days, President Trump, just one hour before the inauguration, is going to take Air Force One down to Florida. He will be moving down to Florida right now. We're getting reports that all of the White House is, or all the staff is currently packing their boxes and moving out. So there will be a big transition. We are also uh, being told that they are going to spend roughly $500,000 in order to clean the White House before the Biden family moves in. So that will be important as well. Now I have some updates for you regarding President Trump and his plans for the next two days. And this is going to be huge. I also have updates on the $2,000 second stimulus check, the possibilities of a third stimulus check. We have updates on unemployment assistance and also rental assistance. So make sure you stick around and watch this entire video. Right now, there's a lot happening because of the transition of power and the stimulus talks. And then you throw all that into the mix with an impeachment trial, and it just makes everything extremely hectic. So I wanna break this all down for you so that you guys understand what is currently happening and why stimulus negotiations could potentially either be sped up or potentially be slowed down. Again, we have two different options. It just depends on what Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, and Joe Biden decide to do. First, Nancy Pelosi is said to be delivering the articles of impeachment for President Trump sometime this week. Some are saying she will do that tomorrow on January 19th. The Senate is in session tomorrow. However, according to multiple reports, Nancy Pelosi doesn't want to deliver the articles of, of impeachment just yet because she wants to wait until Democrats control the Senate. Well, this is where things could actually be delayed because right now the Senate might not be majority, um, the, the Democrats might not hold the majority in the Senate until possibly on Friday because Georgia, okay, we got we to remember Georgia, Georgia, um, they do not have to certify their election results until Friday, okay, until the 22nd. So it could be delayed till then. Well, then we also know that the two senators from Georgia have to be sworn in. In addition to that, we have another senator that has to be sworn in as well because uh, sometime today is when it will become official, but Kamala Harris uh, is going to vacate her seat in the Senate, obviously because she will be the next vice president. Well, somebody has to fill that seat. Gavin Newsom from California already chose somebody to do that but they have not been sworn in yet because Kamala Harris hasn't actually um, vacated her seat. So because of that, there are three Democratic senators that are not in the Senate yet, but will be at some point. Again, when this happens, this could potentially lead into sometime next week. So just understand, if we see that Democrats do not hold the majority in the Senate until possibly next week. We might not see the articles of impeachment until next week. We may not see any stimulus talks until next week. And again, all this stuff just completely slows down. Now, one of the reasons why I want to tell you all of this is because Joe Biden doesn't want Nancy Pelosi to deliver the articles of impeachment yet because he hopes that if she waits, then the Senate can approve his cabinet first. That's what he wants, and it needs to be done. It's a very important position to have advisors to advise the president. He can't deal with everything himself. So if the Senate can approve his cabinet first, then have Nancy Pelosi deliver the articles of impeachment to the Senate, this would potentially free up some more time. This would allow the Senate to not only work on the impeachment trials, but this would also allow the Senate to work on and potentially deal with negotiations for that $1.9 trillion stimulus package. So here's what we know. There will most likely be a $1,400 addition to the stimulus check. That will be coming and it will come to the American people. However, this will not be a monthly stimulus check. 
I, I know I mentioned that yesterday, I mentioned that multiple times in the past week, that there are talks of a monthly stimulus check. But on each one of those videos, I mentioned that, yes, there's talks, but at the same time, those talks are going to be pushed back. Because as of right now, it's being talked about that the Biden administration doesn't want to pour that much money into the American people's pockets when it could be spent in different areas, like on unemployment, on state and local government funding, on rental assistance, food assistance, and different things like that. And that would actually go further. It would actually travel throughout the economy much faster and it would, it would uh, go a little bit further than if it just went into the American people's pockets. So we know that. We also know the $1,400 stimulus check will include adult dependents. Uh, and this will be the $1,400 plus $600 equals the full $2,000. Right now, there's a lot of people pushing back saying that Joe Biden promised a full $2,000. And he, and being that President Trump was the one that passed the first $600 stimulus check, it doesn't actually go to Joe Biden. So he's actually taking a little loophole here and, and trying to trick the American people and saying, hey, I gave you $2,000. This is what you asked for. This is what I promised. This is what you're going to get. But some people are saying, nope, this is still $600 shy of what you promised. So we will see what happens there. The $1.9 trillion stimulus package at this point has yet to even be negotiated. What we are hearing is that the Biden administration pretty much put out this rough draft of a proposal to try to get some feedback, not only from some of their, their you know, Democratic colleagues, but also the, you know, the people across the aisle, the Republicans. That's what, that's what we're hearing. So until we get some more feedback from Mitch McConnell, again, Mitch McConnell, Kevin McCarthy, what they say is going to hold a lot of weight. We need to see what they say. And right now, we haven't heard a thing from Mitch McConnell in a little while. But we should hear something from him tomorrow. Whether it's on the stimulus negotiations and the stimulus package is, is currently unknown. My guess is we will hear something. Whether he goes into much detail, that again, we do not know. But until negotiations happen, again, these are more formal or informal negotiations. Just, uh, well, we don't like that much state and local government funding. All right, well, what do you like? Well, we don't want a $15 federal minimum wage. Well, okay, what do you want? And so these informal negotiations have to happen in order to see the bill actually be written. Once the bill is written, then it can be put on the floor of the House and the Senate and be voted on. Again, this bill, it has to become a bill. This is not even a bill, so I don't know why I keep calling it a bill, but this rough proposal has to become a bill in order for it to be voted on in the in Congress. So we still have multiple days, if not weeks, before we even see this bill. Now, even though we might not hear a lot about the stimulus talks or stimulus negotiations, just understand they are happening. But it would be because the Senate is focused on the impeachment trial, and that's the reason why we don't hear a lot about the stimulus. Or if we hear more about stimulus than we do about the impeachment trial, just understand the impeachment trial will still go on and it's still going to be a priority. However, it is just that they shifted focus towards the stimulus as opposed to the impeachment trials. But here's what we know. What Joe Biden apparently doesn't want the Senate to try to do is split their time between approving cabinet members, dealing with the stimulus negotiation, and dealing with the impeachment trials. To do all of this, it is reported that they would need unanimous consent from all 100 senators in order to do this. And right now, there are two that will push back. We know Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley will oppose this. And once they do, they will not be able to do everything that Joe Biden wants to do. So this is one of the reasons why he is pretty much telling Nancy Pelosi, hold off on delivering those articles of impeachment so that the Senate can actually approve my cabinet members. This is key, and I believe she knows this. So the next four days are going to be interesting to see what actually happens. Now, a lot of people keep mentioning the $2,000 monthly stimulus checks, and rightfully so. And I'm not just talking about you know YouTubers that have nothing to do with you know Congress and making law. I'm talking about people that are actually lawmakers. You know, congressmen and women. Right now, millions and millions of Americans are living in poverty. 
and they need an additional $2,000. They need an additional 500, 1,000, maybe $5,000 per month. They need more money. But is this, and right now this is what we're hearing, is it Congress's job to provide for those that do not have what they need? Is it their job? Is it because of the pandemic or is it because they just made bad life choices? So whether you agree or disagree, that is what Congress is currently talking about. Should we provide for the American people that have been you know, reckless with the way they spend money? Should we provide for those that have been in prison for you know, years for you know, an act of violence or you know, drug use or something like that? Or should we you know, just provide for the certain areas, unemployment, rental assistance, food assistance, things like that, that could make a bigger impact in the long term? That's what we're hearing. So again, whether that's right or wrong, whether you agree or disagree, that is what is happening. But here's what we know. Our congressional leaders, they do want to provide an additional $1,400 stimulus check as quickly as possible. This is what they are saying is that this is their first priority. They want to, to give the American people that additional $1,400 stimulus check. But when that happens, we do not know. What we do know is that Nancy Pelosi is considering putting the Cash Act back on the floor of the House for the new 117th Congress and see if that will pass in a standalone bill. Every indication says that yes, this would pass. And if this passes in the House, gets kicked over the Senate and passes in the Senate, which right now many believe there's enough people to vote yes to get the 60 votes. If this happens, the American people could see a standalone bill for a $1,400 stimulus check addition. Uh, and this could happen in the next couple of weeks. So that is really good news there. But this doesn't really leave us with much as far as the $2,000 monthly stimulus check. A monthly stimulus check at this point is currently very unlikely. And I say this at this point simply because we're in the middle of January. If this was March or April and we were still dealing with a lot of people in poverty, a lot of people out of work, uh, the economy is not open up to the standards that the, you know, the current administration wants, then we could potentially see a $2,000 monthly stimulus check. But at this point, it's highly unlikely. However, there are currently reports of not a second stimulus check amendment, but a third stimulus check. Here's what we're hearing, and this is what I mentioned yesterday as well. This would most likely come months down the road when the economy is struggling to open, the American people are still suffering. We could see an additional stimulus check. However, this would most likely only impact those that have the lowest incomes out there. We are hearing reports that this could be for people that only make $50,000 as an individual or less, and maybe uh, couples, you know, married, filing, jointly that make under $100,000 together. And this is per year. So we are hearing that this could be a check. This could also potentially be a rebate for when you file your taxes. But if they were to do a rebate when you file your 2020 taxes, this could make things very complicated for the IRS, but it also would have to be done very quickly. So we will see what happens there, but right now there are multiple talks happening. Right now we know Congress is looking at many ways to provide for the American people. Some of these ways provide direct payments directly to you. But most of these ways are looking for other avenues to try to provide some relief to the American people. This is also why the Biden administration is really pushing to provide additional relief for rental assistance, food assistance, unemployment benefits, small business aid, and even additional tax credits, because those are seen as other avenues that would provide just as much of an impact as direct payments. However, they would go to more targeted individuals. But speaking of rental assistance and unemployment assistance, let's talk about that for a second, because I think a lot of people have been asking, when is rental assistance coming? I'm, I'm on unemployment, but I haven't gotten the $300. Why? What is taking so long? Here's what we know. Many states are beginning to receive their rental assistance funding. The Treasury Department sent this out on Friday. So the good thing is it's already starting to show up. Multiple states have already begun setting up their counties with their rental assistance portals so that they can start accepting applications. So here's what I want you to do. Watch 
and figure out when does your county actually open up these portals. They will only open up these portals probably when they get the funding. They won't open up before that. However, some counties receive so many applications. And again, this is by, this is by, not by first come first serve, it's by priority. If you have been unemployed in the past 90 days, you will be considered a priority uh, application. If you are at risk of becoming homeless, then you are a priority application. If you make under 80% of the median in uh, household income for your area, you will be considered a priority application. Again, you need to remember, you can get up to 12 months in back rent paid, and you can get also up to three months of future rent paid. Okay, so it's about a 15 month gap. Here's the problem. You can only get 12 months total. So if you are 12 months behind, then and they, that's what they pay, then you will have to pay all the future months. Just keep that in mind. They, uh, some will also pay for utilities as well. So make sure you apply if you are behind on utility bills as well. Make sure you submit those with your uh, rental application as well. Again, if they do not receive it, they do not know you are behind, so they will not pay it. Just keep that in mind. If they pay and they give you all your rental assistance and give you all the 12 months, but then you realize, oh, I forgot the six months of utilities. Well, they're not gonna go back and pay that. They paid you once, you will be done. You will not get any other assistance, at least at this time, that's what we're hearing. Remember, there's not a lot of funding to go around for rental assistance, so as soon as your counties open up these portals, apply. If you do not know when they're going to apply, call. Just go ahead and call your county. Go ahead and call the, the housing authority and figure out you know, when, have you heard anything? Uh, I just wanna know, I'm behind, my landlord's threatening to potentially evict me if I, if I can't pay. And so just let them know, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. You know, I could really use your help. Do you have a date? If they don't have a date, call back the next day or call back in a few days. But do not wait an, an additional week. Call back often and see if they have or any more information for you. In regards to the unemployment benefits, currently a lot of states have begin have begun sending out the additional $300 per week, which is great. But the problem right now is there's a, there's still a lot of fraud happening. There's a lot of people that are submitting uh, fake claims to try to get unemployment benefits. Whether this additional $300 per week will be more than what they normally make in a month, that's entirely possible. And that was one of the risks by providing just a flat 300 or potentially 400 uh, for the next package, uh, 300 to $400 per week in benefits in addition to the state uh, unemployment benefit. So it's because of the potential fraud that a lot of states are implementing diff uh, different and additional checks to make sure that you are eligible for unemployment benefits. Some states are actually calling your employers to find out if you actually did work and why you were let go. Is it because of this pandemic? What we are seeing, and there's been multiple reports and also multiple people here on this channel alone that have said this, is their business or their company went out of business. And if you worked in a business that had actually closed, it's going to make it very difficult and it will pro probably take a little bit longer to get your benefits approved. If this is happening, what you need to do is call the state you need to call the state and figure out if this is the case, if there's any other information that you can provide, at least provide to them, that would actually speed up this process. Sometimes just answering a couple questions over the phone is more than enough. One, uh, one viewer, she wrote uh, just the other day, keep in mind that millions are also going through this, so be patient, but also be persistent. And I can't agree with this more that yes, millions and millions of people in your state are going through unemployment as well. So if you are seeing issues, they are potentially seeing issues as well. There's only so many people to actually process these claims. So be patient, but as she said, also be persistent. Now, in other news, the United States is expected to see a spike in new COVID cases, especially with the new COVID variant within the next couple of weeks. We are starting to see a small decline in cases over the past few days, so this could potentially be good. This could also be due to the limited amount of travel since the holiday season is technically over. We are also getting word that President Trump is planning to pardon over 100 people in the coming days. The White House has also warned President Trump, do not try to pardon yourself. However, 
he is looking to pardon his entire family, even though none of them have been charged with any federal crimes. Remember, a presidential pardon will only uh, work for federal issues. If it's a state-based issue, it will not pardon you. So that is what we know right now. Hopefully you guys have a wonderful Martin Luther King Jr. day. Consider subscribing so I can continue to keep you updated on everything that's going on. And I'll see you guys on the next one.